But uh, I, so I did this at some golf courses and uh, it worked really well. I, I took them from um, 17 fungicide applications, 17 chemical fungicide applications per season down to five. That's encouraging. So they, they save money. That's why they do it. You know, and I, um, and but what I did there is I couldn't, I couldn't afford to have them ever worry about adjusting. So they were sent a package, that's the correct compost, the correct foods. They put it in, flip it on, start it up, and go. Twenty-two hours later, um, are we gonna are we gonna break for lunch now, or do you you want some more stuff you want to get in before lunch? We're, we're um, actually, what I need to do is find something for you to talk about, so I can go get the keys, so I can open up here because I left them in my car. <laughs> Uh, okay. And, so what did you actually put into here? In yeah, what was this wait, formula? Wait, wait, wait. Okay. This recipe, you have recipes that were handed out, right? Please, yeah. This recipe was 20 pounds of compost. 20 pounds okay. of And it better be good. We use this compost on purpose because it's a little bit woody. And the wood means there's more fungi. It's also been sitting here for about a month probably, a month and a half. You don't want to disturb it because fungi grow. If you disturb it, you kind of kill them, you know? So, compost, 20 pounds, one shovel full of good garden soil, right? Okay, then into that mix, the stuff that's going to be too fine to, to go into solution, too gritty, into that compost, I mixed um, Liardnite? Lenardnite. La, la, Lenardnite, yeah. Lenardnite. I got it. You go ahead. What's next? <laughs> uh, I got to learn how to say that. Anyways, humic acids from shale. Um, North Atlantic kelp, okay, um, and azomite, okay. So azomite is A to Z minerals, right? Yeah. Food for my, food for fungi, really. The minerals are best for the fungi. Likewise, the seaweed, and even the humic acids, they're all pretty much fungal foods, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then yeah, 16 true. ounces of molasses, but it turned out I needed 20 <laughs> because it turned out there was more water, you know. Um, and then also... We used fish emulsion and liquid um, maxi crop seaweed. So, oh, and then, like I said, I got a little esoteric because I was reading about fruit pulp and fruit juices. So I mashed up. I just took two mangles and stomped them in a plastic bag, and then squeezed them out right into the compost um, bubbler. Okay, and the so, sugars will move through it. So what you can't see is there's there's a basket in there, right? That's why we can have this chunky stuff. Maybe you can work. Okay. Now it's gonna be heavy as all heck now. Whoa. Okay. And there's an aerator in that basket, oh. right? Yeah. See, so the air is going wow. in from the bottom up through it. Okay. So that basket, because it's it's not gonna dump over very easily, wow. you can have coarser material in the basket. Mm -hmm. You don't want the coarse material in the solution. Right. The basket's the tea bag, right? That you're extracting from. So you. You can have a column of compost, extract off the goodies, then feed them. And so the foods, when you put them in the top, they'll just go right through the basket, right? And so the fish is a food. And uh, so the, the formula he just mentioned is a lot like this base formula here that says turf. Uh, this happened to be a turf class I was teaching, so it says turf, but you could say turf vegetables. Turf vegetables have very similar yeah. needs to turf. So it was a lot like that, and he and he tweaked a little bit with the fruit. And uh, when it says Summa Minerals, that's Azomite. That's just another company brand name. And so it's basically the same formula, but you 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 have to kind of hold to the the recipe per per amount of water, and that's critical. If um, if you made that same recipe with a lot less water, things could change. And uh, if you make it with too much water, it's too dilute. So it, and then, and if the air stops, if you didn't have enough air, you could have problems. So there's all these little things. Again, it's like the compost pile. You're balancing air, temperature. I don't know if this temperature thing works anymore, but the no, old we're, we're using an uh, thermometer, a long, a long stick here, and it's exactly at 72 right now. Yeah, so 72 is pretty darn optimal. If it, if it was in the 50s or lower. Eh, it's gonna be slow. Even the '60s are slow as all heck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes real fast in the in the seven in the high '70s, '80s. You better be on top of it. Yeah. You know? And you're gonna lose some of your life spectrum if you get too hot. You know. So some of the life you want is not gonna be as, as predominant because they don't want those high temperatures. So how high 
how big an area would you apply this 80 gallons? That's what that's what I was just getting to. I was going to ask you guys what you thought about someone like uh, like Bobby that was going to do it on a per acre basis. What do you think would be a, a gallons per acre of maintenance? Well, full strength is like 30 gallons per acre. That we would call that. The, okay. Per, so, what do you? How about you? Um, we all the time are diluting about 50-50, right? We're running. Yeah. We're diluting about 50-50. See the heavy. the tank sprayer is the car the water now is the carrier. So now you're thinking gallons per acre and how much how much is your sprayer put out per acre, right? And then you're gonna figure out how much of this you want per acre. So But maintenance can be as little as five gallons to the acre, right? Yeah. I mean that that'll have a benefit to the Five sure. gallons of the pure yeah. tea. Pure tea yeah. and as much water as it takes and, and probably a spreader sticker. And that's this afternoon after lunch. Yes. <laughs> right. After lunch. That would get into all the applications of it and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I realized my solution to have to go get the key. This is a, 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 a you serve lunch. We need to harvest celery. Juan, you know where the celery is, right? Oh. No? Yeah. 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 Can you cut about two, two bunches? And then take them to the carrots, get enough carrots, and you got to wash the carrots and get them ready for lunch. And by then I'll have a key. We'll cut them up. We're going to have dip. You got need to get hummus, right? We're going to have dip and celery and carrots. Okay. And I'm going to get some tea that was made in a, in a process that's very similar to composting. I paid a lot of money for it at the tea house. I figured I had to get it for this class. I had meant to actually go online. You can go online and look up and read the process, but I figured it was perfect. We'll have that tea. Perfect. Okay. We buy a product called um, Oxidate. It's a fungicide that you spray out. It's fungicide stable, stabilized with acetic acid. And there's another version that's used for harvesting vegetables called Storax. They're kind of interchangeable, except for the Oxidate has a spreader sticker, so it holds better on. So you don't really need that for cleaning, though. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the Storex. The problem is, for you to buy that, you have to buy $150 worth. Oh. It comes in a five-gallon bucket. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's unsafe to ship it, so there's a shipping charge. You know, it's that kind of stuff. So I think probably good, strong hydroperoxide, new hydroperoxide that you know is fizzing good. Okay. You know, or um, boiling water. You know, hot water. Okay. Um, or if you have to use chlorine bleach, use chlorine bleach, but I never want to recommend chlorine bleach. But know, even if you just wash it after using it, you still have to do all these things? Oh, it, even if you just wash it after you use it, you should still probably sterilize it before you use it. Yeah. Okay. If you get it perfectly clean, if you think that there's not a bit of food for something there, then you're fine. Okay. You know? yeah, and that's a, the way I do it. As soon as it's done, it's so much easier to clean. This is going to be a pain in the butt to clean now. Yeah, you know? so like in the 15-gallon the, the brewer, there's a bunch of pipes. So as soon as you get done, you know, take a, a baby's oh. bottle brush and, oh. and you can run some hot water through there or you can run some hydrogen peroxide and just let it circulate and you'll see the films are gone and then you drain it down it all dries you're good like when I used to make your stuff I just I just bottle brush it let it all drain down the next week it's ready to go again we always clean it as soon as we're done yeah. but then we do come back and double check you know the bigger ones the diffusers get dirty and they're hard to reach under and places you have to get in there and take them apart and stuff, you know. Um, and we use, you know, um, oxidate, but you could use hydrogen peroxide. I mean, you can even probably even use salt if you can get it back out again. Salt is a wonderful, um, safe antimicrobial, you know. Um, you just got to be sure you flush it back out because it'll, it'll kill the stuff in your tea, too. Yeah. Okay, so this is hard to find. I've been told if you go to pet stores, you can find it, though. I haven't seen it at, at the kind of pet stores I frequent, which are. <laughs> You know, basically the pet department of Walmart, you know, <laughs> um, which is where I've got some of my kit here. But this is pretty nice because it gets really even air distribution, right? There's not going to be any corners where it's going to go anaerobic, you know? Okay. Oh, that's an aerator? This is a, this is a diffuser, right? Oh. Tiny this little holes. This pumps the air, oh, okay. right? Okay. Um, something we didn't talk about in the key thing is we have what's called check valves in there so that if the power goes off because the the water is the water is above the pump. If the power goes off, you get a reverse siphon, and your pump can be ruined oh. by the water. So, what I recommend instead, and we did it, even though we have check valves, we did it instead to be sure. We always make sure our pumps are above the inlet where the air is going in, so the water can't come back out. It won't go, okay. you know, because it's, it's there's no no place for it to siphon. <laughs> so I recommend that because you don't want to ruin your pump. Okay. All right. So. I get this, of course, I've completely cleaned it, right? As clean as could be, which obviously it is not now. 
Okay? Um, and clean it right away. And I don't know if I told my friend Greg to do it or not, but I looked at it and thought, ooh, boy, that needs to be cleaned. Yeah. Um, and it'll be a job. It'll take longer than I have right now. So I have that in the bottom, okay? Then I have the formula, and it's just a knockdown version of the one we just did. Um, in, a, in a couple of minutes, John will talk to you about extraction, which is another way to get microbes without brewing, just getting them right out of the tea in a hurry. Um, but I'd fill this with compost, put the food, same foods that we talked about in it, right? And then what I do, remember we had that fancy little area that went inside the basket? Well, I got these guys, and they go in there too, right? So then I got the, I got the good aeration on the bottom, and I have these tucked down in the corners of this. And so then I have air coming back up through my compost, you know. And then usually what I use is like a hanger or something. And I got this wire here that's on this. I use the same wire to hold both of these guys up so they don't fall in. You want this to be off. It doesn't want to be in the, in the bucket. It wants to be suspended just above the bucket, okay. So it's suspended above the bucket. The heater, this is not a submersible one. They're submersibles too. It's just I leave it set at 72. I take the wire. I usually hang it from the bale handle, you know, and I just have it hanging there so it won't, you know, um, get in trouble. Take my two air pumps, set them above the thing, plug them in, turn them on. I've got my water going. A key thing to know, if you live where they chlorinate, fluoridate all your, do everything that stuff to your water, you want to turn this on several hours ahead of time. How many hours do you think, John? Give yourself a couple hours because you really you don't know the strength of your aeration, so you just want to crank it. What you're doing is you're oxidizing chlorine. Mm -hmm. if, you have a, if you have a yeah. filter and you can clean your filter, your chlorine water first, like I have a little, my thing at home, I have a way to, to dechlorinate my water before I drink it. You want to use dechlorinated water. If you have well water, probably pretty good to go. You got a healthy pond, there aren't a lot of animals around. We use pond wire, it gives a higher level of protozoa. Yeah. Um, and then you just plug it in, you have it set at 72, come back and check it, you know. You got your tea in there, your foods, right? You, remember, you have your recipes, you know what the foods are. And you're ready to go. This system, less than 20 bucks. If you, go, if you don't buy the bucket, if you get the bucket from Engels, you know, you go to the bakery department and say, hey, you got any buckets? A dollar a bucket, you know, instead of five. Bilo gives them to you. Yeah. Bilo gives them to you for free, there you go. You know, Krispy Kreme, some people will sell them. Dunkin' Donuts has never given me any, I don't know why. <laughs> Um, and, you know, the first few microbes, they get a special meal of, like, you know, red dye number whatever, <laughs> extracts of what's left, you know, but the microbes fix that, no problem, you know. Um, this bucket, actually, I, Elaine now says two days. Oh, really? Yeah, she says it's not as powerful and you want to give it two days of brewing, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, I play with it. Really, it's by the smell. When it smells like the healthy side of a stream, I don't worry about time. All the time, Marshall will say to me, Pat, it's only 14 hours. It's only 15 hours ago. Marshall, it smells great. We can use it, you know. The thing is, okay, it smells great, and it's pouring rain out, and after that, you have to go to the dentist. Uh-oh, my tea's dead. No. You can just not even worry about it for three, four hours, right? Probably it'll still be fine. After that, you give it a little bit more of the foods, and they just keep eating. They keep going. Yeah, because your population goes up, then it uses the foods. Still got air still going now, it starts to crash because it's running out of food. So when it goes up and then you're not there, you can add a little squirt. And that segues perfectly into spreader stickers and tank mixes. Yeah. So now you got this concentrate and you're going to put out at five gallons per acre. Well, there's five gallons. You got to get that out on an acre of land. How are you going to do that? You got to have water as the carrier, right? So again, the water can't be chlorinated and the carrier is your spray tank, or your little, either your backpack sprayer or your bigger sprayer, and uh, you're going to put that into the spray tank. But then there's some stuff you can do when you do that, because now you're done aerating it. It's going in the spray tank. It's only going to be a few minutes before you put it on the land, so it's not going to run out of air right away. 